Okay, so I mentioned before that um, when you are inputting the uh, the surface, the um, the fire, um, there are a couple ways you can do it. I'm going to call this one HR fire, and so um, just to, just to make show you another way to do a burner that's a lot more. Um, uh, let's say a lot more true to some real life testing. So let's say you are looking at a fire that's in a business and then you go over to the SFE handbook and you find this heat release rate curve that's showing uh, business machine cabinets made from uh, polyphenylene oxide or something. But in general, we have a nice curve here. Uh, we have a timeline, but uh, can we put this in the model? Um, the answer is yes, we can. So um, we can just take a nice little screenshot of this, um, save it in something like Paint. Um, uh, PowerPoint also works uh, works well as well, as, as well but I. Um, I'll just do it like this. Uh, I'll just save it on the desktop for simplicity. Um, and then we can uh, go back and Um, so now we have the picture saved, and we're going to use this tool I like called Engage Digitizer. Um, this can be found by just Google searching Engage Digitizer. Um, it's a very useful tool. Um, yeah, I'm gonna run it. Um, so when you open it up, it's just kind of a blank screen. Um, so then you import the image file that we just captured. Um, navigate to the folder and then you can just open it right up and it uh, um, one cool thing that it can do is uh, it can do curve fitting um, it's not great at it and that's why I like to do it a little bit manually at first um, so the first thing you want to do is you want to uh, pretty much call out what the axes are um, so I do, do that by clicking this axes point button um, and then you can go and when you click it'll ask you where it is that's zero zero and you click at the far end of the um, x-axis you can do it in whatever you want you just need to make sure that um, you have your scale correct and you have um, whatever it is correct so this is the x-axis it's zero uh, basically over 600 seconds up 0 HH or, or heat release rate so put 600 here and uh, hit OK and then we want to go up here to the 700 that's here and put that over here um, so now what this program does is it, it, anytime you uh, click on a point it can know exactly which or not exactly but approximately um, the time from here and the heat release rate from here. Um, you can do this manually. This is a whole lot easier. Um, so now um, what we do is we do a curve point. Or that, that's what I do and it starts at zero, zero. So I like to try to do that and uh, that gives you a nice starting point. And then you just click on the curve. Um, the more times you click, the better resolution you'll get. Um, but here, where it's fairly straight, you really don't um, need uh, that good of a resolution. So um, I'm just going to try to make this as simple as I can here. And then we're, uh, we're done. OK, so now you have a bunch of the points. Um, I'll, I'll lay it out, and you want to you want to export this um, and you probably want to export it as a CSV so that's what I'm going to do um, 
and and that's what I I did. And you can when you can come over here, you can open up this CSV, and now you have a nice uh, curve. I'll um, I'll lay it out. This is going to be the, the time, the x-axis, and this is going to be the heat release rate uh, in kilowatts. I think it was. Uh, not that one. Um, Yeah, in kilowatts. Oh dang, this is a huge fire. Um, okay, so um, pretty big. Um, however, that's fine. Um, uh, so from here, uh, we know that, that we know the timeline and we know the heat release rate. Um, when we go back to PyroSim and back to the surface that we just made, the way you use this is you're going to go down to see. Uh, a custom, so you're going to make a custom curve, and you just come up with this kind of uh, spreadsheet thing. And so how FDS does it is you have to put in the time and the fraction of the maximum heat release rate per unit area. So we're still using this heat release rate per unit area that we were before, um, <coughs> um, and we have to make sure we have to we input that. So I can go back to my spreadsheet and I can find that uh, herpua or whatever you call it. Um, there we go, and we can input that there. So we know that. Um, I also like to do a nice calculation where I can find the maximum heat release rate um, because that just makes it easier to calculate. And we just do max, and then um, we can just do uh, B to B. And so we can find that the max heat release rate is this. Uh, heat release rate per unit area is going to be um, oh we needed area of the fire not the that um, okay so this is going to equal this divided by this um, so it's going to be around 200 um, but like I said the thing we need to find is the actual fraction? Um, that's what that's what uh, this custom curve is looking for. Um, the fraction of the max heat release rate. So what we're going to do is we're going to just you know, let's call this fraction or whatever you want to do, and this is just going to equal um, this number divided by the max heat release rate, like this, and then you can just drag this down. No, obviously. So you need to just make this a constant and like that. So here's the maximum heat release rate and here's all your values. So then you can just hide this column. You can select all of these. And what's awesome is you can just paste them and it works. It's great. I, uh, I'm a fan. Um, and so you hit enter. Um, you can get the HHR per unit area and you can input it here. And then you're done. Um, so I think that's pretty easy. You can see that it makes the uh, ramp curve for you. And uh, so um, then to really to like make it official, I guess you have to make this one. You have to change it to the fire. But there you go. It just um, that's how you find a curve, uh, digitize it, and put it into PyroSim.